Hi everyone and uh, welcome to my review of yet another, let's call it obscure earphone. Uh, I think I'm kind of creating a reputation for myself in that, uh, in that aspect. Uh, again, this is going to be uh, an IEM from a manufacturer which is a cable manufacturer and a good one is that which is XINHS. Um, those of you that follow me know that I reviewed its small brother, the OnePlus 2, a couple of weeks ago. Here it is. OnePlus 2, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I've actually got two of them. Yeah, well, you know, my OCD. Um, well, I actually got two of them just basically to see if the QC was maintained, and it, it was. Uh, they, they, they definitely, whoever is manufacturing this for them is, is, do, is doing decent QC. Uh, so, the OnePlus 2, if you recall, is a OnePlus 2 hybrid, 1DD2 to, um, to uh, balance armatures, a 29689 and a 33518. And uh, from what I was able to ascertain, the OnePlus 4 is basically double that. So it's two 29689s and two 33518s with the same 10 millimeter dynamic driver in the same shell, which is perfect fit in my ears. The same control switches with four tuning curves, which actually do alter uh, slightly the, 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 the signature um, and um, yeah well uh, it came in this simple package like it's one plus two brother brought a decent cable as you can see I mean the cable is fantastic the only thing I asked for was it, it to be a two plus five a two a 2.5 millimeter uh, uh, input and and yeah, I mean, cable flawless. Uh, I, I really hope that when they do start commercializing it, they will include decent cable with it and and work on the overall package that uh, the earphone will have because it will be competing in a in a price range which is pretty uh, pretty tough. I mean, I, I'm not sure uh, about what the final price will be, but I'm guessing it will be anywhere between 130 to 140 dollars. And at that price, uh, you have some stiff competition. So uh, besides obviously being competent in the main thing, which is playing well, uh, it, it best it's also competent in, in terms of what it brings with it because more and more you know people are demanding that. I mean, we just have to see the example, for example, of the T-Force, uh, the Yuan Li, the packaging that it comes in, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, that, you know, you, you, you get a box like that and you open it up and you start seeing what the accessory that it comes with and you ask yourself once or twice, is this really $100? Uh, I mean, and that's currently the price you can get at, at uh, Hi-Fi Go. It's $100. So, you know, um, I really hope that XINHS will, will try and do something along those lines of really making a nice package. I'm not sure about what other colors will be available. Probably in the future they will make available other colors. The OnePlus 4 as of now and from what I know will only come in this color. While the OnePlus 2 also only comes in one color which is this black one with the logo there on the on the faceplate. So uh, uh, it's not ugly. I mean I obviously would have preferred a little bit more sober coloring. Perhaps the black maintain it there on, on the OnePlus 2 and this one could have been maybe a, a burgundy faceplate, something like that, you know, this this green faceplate is not, uh, it's not exactly the most pretty one. But anyway, that's irrelevant. Um, what is relevant is that, uh, as was the case with, um, with the, uh, with the, um, one plus two when I reviewed it and I mentioned that it was really a a, a very competent IEM and the only one that could actually in my opinion keep up with the GD3A which is in my opinion uh, the best one plus two hybrid at around a hundred dollars or below a hundred dollars right now um, and I just recently compared them with uh, this TriStar C uh, and the Legacy R3 and, and uh, I mean this it's just there's just no competition um, both the GD3A and the XINHS 2 plus 1 are fantastic IEMs uh, although I gave the win to the GD3A to be honest and to be I mean totally honest I would actually have to give it um, 
you know give it a, a, a first place as well to the XI NHS because they they just slightly different they do things just slightly different and and are more suited for uh, different types of of, of 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 what you're looking for I mean if props if perhaps you listen to a lot more rock and so on you'll prefer the XI NHS while the 3d a the GD3A is is more is more coherent, more balanced out. I mean, I even called it Mr. Classy, and I called the XINHS Mr. Energetic, because that's exactly what they are. Um, one is very laid back, very classy, does everything with a lot of with a lot of uh, pizzazz, okay. And the other one is that, but with full of 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 energy, you know, and and it does it well. You you would think, oh, because maybe if it's got all those that energy in the mids and and early highs, it will be bright or overly shouty, and and no, none of the, none of that. Anyway, the same way I was as was the case with the GD. Oh, well, sorry, with the yes, with the GD three uh, A that they came out with the GD five, which is over here, which is uh, one plus four, and that is now alongside of the GD three A, my my two favorite IEMs manufactured by GS Audio out of all the ones that I've tried so far and hopefully I will carry on trying more and, and bringing it to you guys. The XINHS OnePlus 4 is exactly the same thing for XINHS. So it's basically taking the formula of the OnePlus 2 and giving it a, a little bit of a more polished um, touch-up. Uh, and by that, what do I mean? Let me just try and get you here some graphs so you can see. Actually. I'm gonna jump the gun here a little bit and actually show you a graph between it and um, and uh, the GD5. Uh, I've used 800 hertz as the common point there. Come on, focus. There we go. Uh, the GD5 is a red line, and the XINHS is the green line. Um, and what immediately jumps uh, to our attention is the fact that the XINHS is more energetic in terms of mid bass, um, and then it has that more significant dip with also more significant peanut gain. Peanut gain. Um, is it perceivable? Do you really notice it? Um, not really. You would have to be really nitpicking and, and really trying to find, uh, you know, a lot of. S you, you would really have to try relatively hard to really see that. What you do notice, obviously, is that yes, of course, the one plus four is more energetic. But um, that's what basically jumps out, and then the rest is very, very much similar. Um, the overall extension of both of them, uh, you know, is is very similar. There's just more energy between that one point five and five uh, k. Uh, there's just more energy in the XINHS which can make um, for the uh, for the uh, vocals to to sound uh, a little bit more more forward a little bit more um, more there than uh, in the uh, gd5 which I think it's it, it um, if the gd3a and, I'm go and now comparing the GD3A to the to the XI and HS1 Plus 2, if in terms of the voice reproduction, that was one of the things where you could see a slight difference in that in the GD3A, the male voices sometimes seemed a little recessed while the females were perfect, and the XI and HS did both voices, females and males, perfectly. This is what also, I guess, uh, or I feel is happening with the XINHS OnePlus 4 and the GD5. The GD5, the male voices sometimes just seem a little bit recessed um, while the, f the, the females are, are, are fine. I mean, I, I really didn't um, didn't have anything to point there. And on the XINHS, both uh, male and female voices are, are reproduced perfectly. Uh, anyway, I jumped the gun there a little bit. What I wanted to show you was the graph of the one one plus four and one plus one plus two. Okay, so this is the graph of the one plus four on its own, and as you can see, a 
little bit of a mid-bass focus, but nothing, it's relatively flat between 20 and 100 hertz, nothing, then it's slots, slots uh, dipping and, and its lowest point is around 700 hertz, and then starts its spin again, uh, which is um, around, uh, I would say 10, well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10, 12 dBs, um, and then flattens out more or less and then slots its downward slope from 5k onwards okay the gd2 was also more or less the same thing as you can see very similar uh, flat a little bit more mid bass uh, emphasis the same dip to around uh, six seven hundred hertz in this case actually 600 hertz and then starts again its pin again of 12 14 dBs perhaps and then it just maintains itself more up there uh, until around 10k when it starts uh, going down what in practical terms this means is that the oneplus 4 has polished up the possibility of there being some harshness up top some, some unnecessary sibilance and it just makes the whole reproduction of sound that more pleasurable. Um, I mean, like I was saying, the male voices uh, are fine, female voices are fine. Detailed retrieval is, uh, uh, I mean, I, I cannot, I cannot, uh, it's, 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 it's really good. Soundstage, um, uh, plenty wide. Uh, could be perhaps a little bit deeper but plenty wide I mean nothing really that you can falter there again um, it, it is full of energy but it's full of energy in a very controlled manner and, and that makes for a very pleasurable listen um, I, I honestly didn't I didn't notice any sibilance uh, while on certain songs I would notice sometimes a little bit of sibilance in the one plus two on the one plus four i, I didn't uh, notice such such issues um and yeah i mean in, in you know in a you know in a very resumed way that's what i can say about the one plus four it's it's definitely an improvement over the one plus two of its smaller brother uh it's more polished you can feel that it is definitely more polished um based on both of them you know the bigger brother the smaller brother very similar uh, mids as well the same thing it's on the higher registers that uh, uh, the difference appears and the one plus four is more polished it's more it does things with a little bit more uh, style let's put it that way um, it's not so much in your face and I guess it's down to the fact that they've just doubled on the BA, so they don't have to be working as hard, and that has, you know, uh, reaped its results. Um, as compared to the GD5, um, again, I'm not going to say it's a winner or, or anything of the sort. It's just a different style of, of, of music reproduction, and I would basically say it's the same situation like I've just mentioned before. That happened between the OnePlus 2 and the GD3A. Um, this will probably be more suited if you like listening to rock and 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 you know stuff with a little bit more guts to it. The GD5, more of an overall uh, complete um, IEM. Uh, it will do everything very well, um, but with rock and so on and so forth, with with stuff that needs a little bit more energy. It will have uh, a little bit. Uh, it will. It won't be on its own. Let's put it that way. Uh, technicalities, they very much matched on both of these. There's not really that much difference. Soundstage, I would actually consider the soundstage uh, on the XINHS slightly wider than the GD, but the GD is a little bit deeper. Imaging is very much uh, equal on both of them. Uh, one thing that I did find was they are actually quite tip dependent um, and there's a reason why I'm actually using these wide bores uh, it's just it just opens up the sound uh, and 
I got this sensation, the feeling that the, the closed bores were somehow covering up the, um, the output uh, vents, the output holes, uh, to a certain extent. They were kind of uh, hampering the way that the sound could leave those mentioned tubes. Um, and as you can see as well here on the, on the GD, I've also got a nice uh, whiteboard tip there. Um, and and I think that's the way that definitely we should go is with the whiteboard tips and uh, Yes, that's basically it. So if you guys have any questions or anything that you want answered, please don't hesitate and um, That's it. I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye